Welcome to North Texas Networkers, a show about connecting people across the DFW Metroplex. As realtors, we get the opportunity to meet and work with a variety of interesting people. And this is our chance to introduce you to them. Join us as we talk with our community influencers, share their inspiring stories, and reveal how and why they shape our local communities. I'm your host, Carol Lee Gurney. And I'm your co-host, Stacey Reevely. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and welcome to North Texas Networkers. I'm Carol Lee Gurney and we are sponsored by Willowbin Mortgage and Craig Schrank. Thank you once again for another show. With me here we have uh, Stacy Cooper Reevely. <laughs> and <laughs> welcome. And then we also have Rombie Bryant and Javier Collins. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you yes. for having us. They thank are you. both former NFL. Yeah, thank you. They are both former NFL players and both heavily involved in the National Football Players Association, which is an association for former players. And we are going to learn all kinds of good things about that today. But I want to learn a little bit about you first. First, just tell us a little bit about life in Collin County after football. Well, with me. Uh, when I first moved here, I wasn't done playing, so I finished my career in the CFL. So I played in the CFL from 08 to 2014. I got married in 2014, moved down here, and went back to Canada and left my wife here. And then, once I was done with football, 2015, well, 14, going into 15, that's when I finally landed here and rooted here. And it's been good. It's, it was kind of hard transitioning out in a new city getting to know new people you're one y'all one of the first people i met because i opened my own insurance business and done a ton of networking so that's how i got familiar with collin county got out there it was shaking hands and kissing babies (laughs) (laughs) and you have a baby of your own too not so much a baby anymore yeah not a baby anymore she's three years old and then i have a 10 year old okay yeah which one of them runs the household the three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. The three-year-old. Hey, you know, day, 100%. Having a similar age children, knowing wow. that it's like the younger that they are, the more control over the house they have. <laughs> so totally. Um, so similar to Rambi, uh, except my – so my career was over when we re- relocated back here to Texas. Uh, and I say relocate because I actually started my career here, uh, professional career here in Texas with the, uh, with the Cowboys. And uh, when my career was over, we relocated back to North Texas. Um, it wasn't in Collin County. I believe uh, we're on Dallas County, which is good enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it, works. <laughs> it all blends together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but just seeing um, what is amazing to me is just the amount of expansion and the amount of growth that has happened in the last several years. Businesses to real estate to just the culture of North Texas in general, which is exciting. So it's kind of amazing to me because when I moved here with my husband to Collin County, and I came from I, I lived in Arlington when I first moved to the DFW area, yeah. and when I moved to Collin County, we moved to Frisco where there was Brookshire's and McDonald's and La Hacienda, and my husband wow. used to hunt there. Mm-hmm. It, it's <laughs> it's a wide open space. So that's, that's a good mix. Concepts, the the growth, the mentality, everything so different. We were looking. We were living in Plano, and and my husband at the time said, "Well, let's move to Allen." I was like, well, "Where's Allen?" I didn't know where Allen was from Plano. Across the street. <laughs> that was twenty five years ago, and so yeah. it's obviously on the map now. So yeah, it's definitely changed and grown a lot. So. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just a side yeah. note, I kind of laughed because when I first met you and you came to our office, well, actually, I met you before that. I met you with Shelley. Uh, not Shelly. Uh, Stacy. Stacy. Yeah, Stacy. And uh, your your uh, taglines always cracked me up. Which one? Oh, oh the lines. Yeah. So uh, don't fumble in your insurance and protect me high and tight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 it's always funny. Yeah. Well, so how did you guys get involved in playing football in the first place? Well, I was forced to play. I was uh, as a little kid. I was scared to play football. Were you as really? Little, literally, yes. I was that kid that cried. <laughs> And then uh, they forced on me, and I realized I was good. 
and the rest was history. So mm -hmm. I started playing when I was in around the third grade, Pop Warner Ball, then took a break uh, in the sixth grade, and then started playing again in the seventh grade, and played seventh grade on through uh, high school, or pros really. And I didn't even start in this, uh, my seventh grade year. So I was a star in Pop Warner. Politics played a part, you know, that's what we mm -hmm. like to say. In the mm -hmm. seventh grade, I didn't play at all. Then I moved schools, switched schools because of some other uh, things, situations. And then eighth grade on, I've always been a starter. Mm -hmm. Of course, until I got to the pros. <laughs> yeah, that changes for a lot of people. Yeah. The pros. So interesting. So for me, uh, similar. My started very early, and I was always so I was always the bigger kid in class. So I, I think the first time I played football, I was in first grade playing up, playing for a third, maybe third and fourth, or second and third. I can't remember. Way too much football, way too early. Mm. I didn't pan out that year. The next year I tried again, and it stuck. So mm. I played, and like Rombie, um, I took a break around fifth grade, sixth grade. I uh, discovered basketball, and I kind of ran with that for a while. And uh, looking back, I think basketball really helped me be, become a better athlete. I didn't pick up football again until later in high school, junior year, I believe. And then it just continued on from there. So, um, But yeah, that was like the biggest attribute for me was the athlete, the athleticism. So I... I, I Give all that to playing hoops. Yeah. I can see yeah. that with a big guy working on your footwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you go on and you have these NFL careers, and then when they're done, what does life look like when you're finished with the sport? And, you know, I know that part of the NFL Players Association that you work with that kind of helps that transition. Tell us some more about that. You want to? Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, either. Oh, yeah. Well, with me, when as soon as I got done, that's what I did. I tapped into the NFL PEA network to see what resources they had to help us transition out and it was a, it was a lot of things i mean it was too many well i wouldn't say too many things but just several different things you can utilize and it's just like okay what should i do because there's a million different things out there and there's no one to help you navigate that when we play pro ball we're so used to having people telling us what to do they have our itinerary this is what you do this is how you do it this is what you eat and going about your life so you don't have to figure anything out and as soon as you're done they give you there's a website with a ton of resources and you really don't know what to do and how to do it so me the first thing I did was just reach out to guys like Hob Byron he was the president at the time I met Javier uh, Scott Turner he's my mentor now and just asked them what they did and how did they how did they transition what was some of the things they did and that's who helped me out because it's i mean it's so many things you can choose from on the nfl pa side to help you with your transition and some of it might be useless and then mm -hmm. you're wasting their time and their money and their resources when it's something that you might not even need and want what do you think is the and this kind of gonna step back because so many players get in these big roles and make so much money that what do you think is, is the biggest mistake young players make that put them in a position that make it really difficult for them to transition from this high income out of NFL playing to figuring out to, what to next. figuring out yeah. how they're going to make those next steps and how and and, and we we've, we've worked with clients before that have come mm -hmm. out of that transition and and they're trying to figure out what to do and how to make those next steps and you know and some of them are successful and and some of them really struggle, struggle with it. Um, how can they be better at, at the front end yeah. uh, so that they come out better on the back end? Uh, that's a great question. So I would say that that involves two sides. Okay. That involves um, obviously the, the work and the work ethic from the athlete, mm -hmm. but it also involves a process or even resources, if you will, something in place from the institution side mm -hmm. to sort of bridge that gap. Right now, we we came up in an era to where the resources themselves have uh, like multiplied exponentially mm -hmm. compared to how it was before 2000 or the 90s or even the 80s. Right, there were compared to now, there's like tons more stuff happening for for guys to 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 you know utilize and and, and leverage. Um, 
However, um, to your question about the, can you restate it again? This so I make sure I'm Gosh, on point. That's a big mouthful that I gave you. <laughs> Let's see if I can get through it. What can they do at the front end yeah, to help Yeah, what can they do at the front end? And is, is the yeah. Players yeah. Association helping bridge that gap so that ha on both ends? To, so to having, having the end in mind, what that means is, um, you know, we're coming, in, coming into the league as, you know, being an athlete your entire year. I mean, you're confident. Maybe some guys are cocky. And you just maybe even arrogant, so you don't think about the fact the fact that you know your playing days are going to end, right? And most likely they're not going to end on your terms, mm -hmm. right? So being more realistic mm -hmm. and being more open mm -hmm. to that kind of reality, I think the players can do to help themselves. <coughs> pardon me, is to prepare more proactively, mm -hmm. meaning. You have time, you have you know, a little bit of disposable income, mm -hmm. explore some things you're into, right? Explore some interests, find out some new hobbies, take a couple of online courses. I mean, depends on how creative the player wants to get, but there's tons of approaches that, that can be used. Well, they have to be so excited at a young age to be in a position to be able to go play in the NFL mm -hmm. or, or even mm -hmm. play basketball, whatever it may be, the NBA, that they're young, they're excited, they're not really thinking about what's life like after. What's yeah. life like later. Right. This, is, this is now and I've got such a great opportunity. Um, it's got to be difficult Absolutely. to think further than that. And that's when the institution comes into play. Mm -hmm. The league or the team to sort of be a, a check the balance, mm -hmm. right? Keep, keep, that, keep the reality in mind of like, yeah, I mean, it's great, absorb it, live it up, but this thing has a timeline to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a very finite timeline. Yeah. Like one of the things I just took a class uh, called system design, and we had to talk about that. Like systems, the design, uh, go build a system to help with uh, conflict management, dispute resolution, or whatever the case might be. And one of the things I said that the NFL needed to do better on the institution side is like realtors, insurance agents. A lot of people, you're forced to have continued education, right? Mm -hmm. Every year or every two years, you're forced to go relearn some things. That's what I think players should do because yeah, we're taught great. from high school on through college to have on our blinders and just concentrate on the on us. championship and us, us, right? Yeah. Like, go, go get better on the field, go get better at this. Get stronger in the gym. Yeah, mm -hmm. get stronger yeah. in the gym, but not concentrate on real life. And But I, if they force it on them, because we're not going to do it our own, because we're trying to be better. We're kind of wired that way. So yeah. I think on the institution side, like, they need yeah. to force continual education. Like, whether it can be one hour, two hours, or whatever the case might be, a month. But do something. You have one thing they have now, they have clout. Like, they're popular. Mm hmm I mean, if they call any Fortune 500 company while they're playing with the Cowboys and say, hey, I want to come intern here, or I would like to talk to such and such and learn more about the business, they're more than likely that. to say yes. yes. It's a lot better outcome yeah. than mm -hmm. after they're done playing and they right. make that kind of yeah. call. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Like Absolutely. now, if I call, they like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> why? Yeah, yeah. Why are you I'd coming? take your call, Rumby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like almost like we're forced to have continued education. I think it needs to be something in place. I don't know how mm -hmm. that looks, but something to force them the in the off season. Like, hey, you have three months off. You can do this. It can be something with finances, mm -hmm. financing, something go continue education on your uh, mm -hmm. college or wherever the case might go. Learn a trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. And in all fairness, I mean there is a level of with the NCAA with college athletes, mm -hmm. right? That is a very prime season of their lives to institute a lot of this and a lot of those resources to help yeah. prepare them for when the game has is, is, is left their lives, whenever that is. It's right? like it should be a class in college their freshman yeah. year. It does. Yeah. <laughs> can I ask just a, I mean, just off the cuff, can I ask your, an opinion question about sure. college, college sports? How do you feel about, uh, about um, teammates leaving? Maybe this is like, Tell Just tell me if I shouldn't <laughs> ask this question. <laughs> what do you no, think yes. about uh, college athletes leaving their teams early to go play a uh, professional? I honestly don't see a problem with it because you can always go back to school. You can't always play pro ball. Mm -hmm. If they tear their knee up, I mean, then they're yeah. done. Mm -hmm. You can always go back to school. I'm in school now. I'm in getting my master's. So I feel like you can't always become a millionaire. 
Okay. <laughs> you know, no, I, no, I would agree. Okay. I mean, I think just there's a special uh, connection inside of a locker room, mm-hmm. and everyone really wants everyone else to really make it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if if your teammate has the opportunity to extend his career and get paid for that, then I wouldn't see any anybody no, ha- will, hating yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Good. That's good. I, that's yeah. good. Which, which well, a big <laughs> issue is like the coaches, right? The co- you ever had a coach who left? Oh, yeah, the coach. Yeah, yeah the, the coaches. coaches right? Yeah, because there's a lot of <laughs> schools. I mean, Tulsa was one there for a second where two or three years or, well, about five years, we had three different coaches. Mm-hmm. You know, I had two coaches while I was there. So a lot of coaches just come. And they have this big recruiting class. They do well, and they're moving on to a big – because everybody want to coach in a Big 12, SEC, or some big conference because that's where the money's at. Mm -hmm. So these little schools, like I went to a little school. A stepping stone to Yeah, a stepping stone. Yeah, they're doormats. Yeah. 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 Well, Robbie, so you have gotten – you sell insurance. Yes. Uh, You mentioned just a minute ago dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. Um, What else have you done to kind of further your education and – your interests oh yeah well within that program Javier and I are both in that dispute resolution conflict management program and we uh, have our executive coaching certificate so what do you do with that when you have an executive coaching certificate well you coach I mean you coach I mean not necessarily executive but you (laughs) you coach uh, managers you coach coaches you just go in and coach people it can be this isn't really athletes this is is business people right uh, being being qualified and certified mm-hmm. to impart all the skills learned from football and through sports and help leaders, business leaders, executives become better, better more refined leaders within their teams. Very good. Yeah. And I just take what I learned in football and tie it into what I learned in the secular level of college or whatever mm-hmm. and teach people. Leadership. Anna, don't you have some pictures of him? Uh, at some of these conferences speaking <laughs> I think she does yeah. uh, so who is one of the most interesting people that you have had the opportunity to coach or a group well, of people that maybe you've spoken to or, or led well the, I spoke to I went back to Western Heights and spoke to those kids and then I just talked about the transition from high school to college just to give them and tell my story as a walk on at the junior college mm-hmm. and what I've been through even before that, how I landed at Western Heights and just kind of talk to them about that. But I I love that because I went back home. It was good to see those kids. One of the kids in the crowd, I went to school with her mom. So, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of told my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it, I haven't had a chance to, I coach, but it was I haven't had a chance to really get out there and coach executives or whatever. Mm-hmm. I coach like mid level managers so okay. far. And it was just kind of uh it was one session and that was it. So I didn't really get to dive deep into anything. But you're building so on but that. the speaking okay. speaking that's I really love doing that because that brought that football feeling back of like, you know, how you get them chills when before you walk down the mm-hmm. field, before you walk on stage, you kinda get those same type of chills. And then once you get the first two sentence, sentences out, it's kind of like getting that first hit to get all the jitters out. Mm-hmm. And I also spoke at a Martin Luther King gala that oh, wow. I really love. Yeah, that that I love that. And I kind of just told a football story to inspire some kids. It, they was giving an oration. It was a competition mm-hmm. for oration. The top five kids uh, made it to the gala. And I just kind of told them a football story, to, you know, told them to reload. And get ready, regardless of what happened. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, talking to talking to youth, talking to kids is always special, mm-hmm. right? Just because you know we've been in their shoes, we've been mm-hmm. in the chairs, and I remember seeing you know guys who were on the professional levels and guys that I idolized as a youth talk, and so it's always a special special engagement. Um, so with with Rami and I's position being players, and also um, how we are involved with the uh, with the former player services, whether it's the alumni or the PA, NFL PA, NFL alumni, or player engagement with the with the Legends community or the trust, like all these different names mm-hmm. represent platforms that athletes here in you know Collin County, North Texas, but also around the country have access to. 
So we're like the bridge to that, but also like we're we're on our own transition, which is really interesting, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So you're helping others, but you're going through it too. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So so with that kind of with that with that being said, so the messaging is, is like always double, right? So a message to another former player or soon to be former player is is um what comes to mind is like focus on your branding right how how do you want to position yourself to the people that you want to impact mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and another valuable lesson is what Ron we spoke on which gave me this this idea was um something that gives you the the feeling of playing those butterflies huh? yeah <laughs> yeah without having to actually go out there and uh, you know shorten your lifeline to do it <laughs> and something that can like that you can use your like the, the 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 tangible and the intangible skills that you develop through the sport right so i, I think that that's the key right there. If you yeah. can find something that you can find do those passion. two things, mm -hmm. right? Recreate that feeling and to give somebody else what you learn. I think that's like a win, 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 win situation. That's awesome. If you could go back and do anything different, is there something that you would change? Oh my goodness, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> we got a little ways up. <laughs> oh, that is a rabbit hole right there. That is, yeah. Okay, pick one then. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, um, I know it's kind of oh no go ahead yeah your question I would just attack it on the front end of my career and have a little bit more forward thinking when it comes to like hey I know this I mean father time is undefeated and I know this career is gonna come to the end it could be one year or ten years so I would <laughs> prepare better in the beginning of my football career. I mean, I was starting in college. Not too many college. careers out there that yeah. are like that, that have kind of a finite, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. If you become an accountant, you can be an accountant for the rest of your life. If you're a pro football player, that's not necessarily the case. I don't know. Uh, totally. I mean, what I said earlier about being more proactive in college, being more proactive early in my professional career, being more... Um, I guess the word that comes to mind, this is a good word, be more vulnerable mm -hmm. to those types of experiences. Uh, definitely in college, playing less video games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> less GTA. I think we need to tell our kids <laughs> that. <laughs> less that, less that. Less video that. games. I mean, definitely video games in college are, it's important. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta have them, but I could have, I could have definitely got by more with less video games. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, just do things that would have that would have prepared me for the, the unknown at that time, mm -hmm. right? Is what happens when this is all over. So, yeah, those are some of the well, things. And I don't think we said this, but you're actually president of the Players Association and you're vice president, right? Well, he's well, vice, vice, president. Both. Yeah. vice president for PA, vice president for alumni. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so those okay. are two different entities. They're two different entities, yeah. okay. Yes. okay. Serving the same community yeah. with the same goals in mind, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. And you yeah. do insurance outside of, um, Outside of the Players Association, that's your full time. Yeah, that's my job. nine to five. And yeah. then <laughs> yours is kind of intriguing. So let's so, talk a little so bit about a, what you yeah, do outside I've, of. Well, I've done a yeah. <laughs> so my, I mean, again, we're talking about like changing of identity, mm -hmm. right? If you woke up tomorrow and said you can no longer be real estate agents, matter mm -hmm. of fact, you can no longer work in the real estate industry, mm -hmm. right? What would you do? <laughs> wow. I'd be do sad. <laughs> <laughs> right, for a while, you'd be sad, right? Somebody stole your teddy bear. You it's, like like my, it's like my, my, my NFL career. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it would be that sad. You got it. I mean, I mean I to, just to put it in perspective, yeah. like that's what, that's what it's like. You mm -hmm. can no longer do that anymore. So my personal approach was, wow, there was so much that I gave up to get there. I kind of took a step back and like went backwards in timing, I guess, is to start exploring and mm -hmm. practicing vulnerability and working on some of those things. So yes, I think mm -hmm. I know where you were headed, but go ahead. But no, I was just gonna say, tell us about what you're doing. Um, you're, you're still sure. helping people, so but it's in an You're asking way. about the alternative? Yes, you're, you're doing alternative healthcare, which we know is, is, is relevant these days. It's uh, intriguing. I, we know we've got people that on both sides of the uh, both sides of the fence fence on it. So so for me, I I realized at a very young age that I was an athlete, right? I think I was like six or seven, and I said, you know what? 
I'm an athlete and athletes can do anything. I remember like consciously verbalizing that to myself. So my whole life, I have had a special affinity to like, to athletes and sports, just in general. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense because sports is so relevant, right? Every industry, I'm sure you were part of a team, mm -hmm. sports, mm -hmm. right? Right. right? Every industry, every company like uses this sports analogy or sports component or sports team. So I'm saying this because when I left playing, the sport left my life, like I, I had to somehow be involved in sports, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I stumbled or I, I guess I gravitated towards uh, the alternative health space. This was a, this organization called Athletes for Care. And essentially what it is about is, uh, the 30,000 foot view is, is uh, uh, creating a situation for athletes to thrive when they are when they left sports or are leaving sports or are, are still in sports mm -hmm. right and one of the major one of the major hurdles or pitfalls is uh being an athlete we make our living off of our bodies and our minds and that you know bodies have a a, a certain half-life yeah <laughs> it's we've got a limit going, <laughs> so the status quo i know for Rambi and i uh, when playing football, the status quo was around when you get hurt or if you need a surgery or anything, anything related to the body, um, you, you know, we get a, a regimen of opioids or we get a regimen of, you know, anti-inflammatories, yes. yeah. which I know, yeah, you remember some of yes, those. We, yeah, yeah, they just, yeah. And that was all we had, right? We had no other alternative. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to go to practice still and you just have an ankle or a knee or a shoulder that is inflamed, like you're gonna you're gonna take an anti-inflammatory. Unbeknownst to us, the the negative side effects they had in our bodies. So uh, recently, within the last seven years, we've um, you know there's there's tons of alternatives to that. So primarily, um, there's green alternatives. We talk about cannabis, primarily the CBD, um, and we're learning more and more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know there's hydration, there's yoga, there's uh, stretching, there's all these different approaches that we can take that are, um, I would say, different than the way that it's being ran currently, mm -hmm. that are just as or even way more effective than how things are being ran currently. So that's great. So that's kind of my, what you're doing. that's okay. my fuel tank when I'm in that direction, just Again, it's all it's all based off of my love for just athleticism, yeah. right? And sports culture. And that's a charity. It it's is a nonprofit. Nonprofit. It is a nonprofit. Okay. Yes, athletesforcare.org. Okay. Yes. Good. Very good. Very good. Nice. Did, do you have another question? No. no question. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you guys want to bring up, or is it we we kind of shout outs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, we, we talked about this. We talked about this with the how important it is. To find yourself, right? And mm -hmm. we've learned, like in the past, what is it, ten years? Is the, the term branding? Mm -hmm. It wasn't around like I feel like branding wasn't a, around like fifteen or twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. It's like something fairly kind of personal new. branding, kind personal of personal branding, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or or like the the market a market space for personal branding. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's very important. One of the first steps for an athlete is to decide or even create. Their, their their brand or anybody mm -hmm. athlete non athlete you know you want to yep, you want to identify yourself and share that identity with people who can benefit from your services so I'm sorry I get long winded but yeah I just want to give a shout out yeah, it's a, I want to give a shout out to, <laughs> that's the passion yeah yeah we talk in our coaching we talk about a concept of authenticity so mm -hmm. this is my authentic self. Uh, I love it. That's what we <laughs> wanted to hear today. Absolutely. No, but I want to give a shout out to uh, Brian DeMarco over at uh, Drafter Media. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of our former player fraternity brothers, and he's doing a lot of big things with helping guys and gals, um, athletes, and even non-athletes, right, establish and extend their branding. So if you're an athlete or a former athlete and you have some questions, reach out. And even if you're a non-athlete, right, and have some questions, some conflicts it's a great resource so. that's great yeah, yeah. i'd love to get a shout out to angelia pelham uh 
She's yes. helped me out a lot. Uh, Doctor B, Dr. Robert, B. Robert Barner, yes. and Sal. That's Those uh, well, Angelia and Doctor B, they're both executive coaches, and they. He was our professor for a while. He just retired, and Angelia, she's a executive coach. Mm -hmm. Professor she, where? At SMU. SMU. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out to SMU. Him. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he and helped us out a lot That's with right. executive coaching, even outside of class. And where's the book go? Yeah, I just picked up this book as a former player, and I don't know where the camera's at. Yeah, <laughs> he is about transitions, and I'm I'm looking forward to reading it. And uh, well, tell us if you didn't see it that great on the screen. Tell us the name of the book. Oh, uh, Transitions Playbook for Athletes. Fantastic. Yeah, and it just interviews uh, different players that transition out. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'm against, yeah, so I want to give a shout out to Phil and Rob. Well, I want to give a shout out to both of you, Javier Collins and Romy Bryant, for both being here on our show today. We're glad Thank to have you. them. Glad to have you both here with us. Always okay. appreciate our guests and just great conversation. And we are looking forward to next month. We have Maylee and Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas is our McKinney mayor, and his wife has a great story to share with us as well. You will not want to miss that. Again, thank you for our guests today, and we look forward to seeing you next month. I'm Kara Lee. And I'm Stacy. And we are your real estate professionals. Thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, mariposagroupdfw.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A group dfw.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy. And, and we, we are your real estate professionals. professionals.